Ugh. It's too early. <laughs> well then, let's just do that, and then we'll have an implicit, like, also trees. I mean, we could also make this a table that maps iron ore to its type on the ground. So you do something like uh, tree, something like that. Um, I don't know how easy that's going to be to pull out. I guess if I had it not as a nested array, it would work. If I just have it like this, because now I can do for each of starting resources. Okay, let's do it like that then. Unfortunately, it's stupid for the other things that aren't trees, because it's just like that thing again equals itself. But it's scalable, so it will work for any kind of resource that we want. All right. Okay, so what we want to do now is like force, source, and resource in pairs, starting resources. Uh, self sources, we should make this iPairs, I guess, because it's going to be an array. Uh, and then in the constructor. Make it an array. Okay. <laughs> so make sure we have a uh, sources in the array. <laughs> Fire run uptime is like uh, 17 minutes right now. And good morning to you. It's about as much as my brain uptime also. <laughs> okay. Um, so we need to find a way to find uh, entities on the map with that source. And then we're going to add them as um, resources in our source list. So let's, I guess we'll do a search. Um, we'll do a normal uh, search within X range of the player. Uh, which is probably in one of our other tasks here. So the maybe mine resource task, range four. Gather resource task. This one. Range a thousand. <laughs> a thousand is probably too many, but let's, let's start with a hundred, shall we? Get some nice looking nested loops here. So the name is going to be source. <laughs> oh, and this is to find the distance to the find the closest um, source for that resource. I'm not sure if that's a good idea because we want to have the ability to um, yeah we want to have the ability to keep track of multiple things just in case like we want to um, like cut down a forest of trees for example. So I think and this is hopefully not going to be hugely problematic in terms of memory or, or uh, runtime or anything. Um, we will take all of the things that we find and put them in our list of sources. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. 
self dot sources. Type quantity position. Hmm, finding the quantity is going to be interesting. What's the next thing? Fitness. I'm going to put fitness zero for all these basic resources. Um, I might have to come back and figure that out. Uh, how many, what's the quantity? So, given I have uh, trees and stuff, let's see, it's probably going to be an entity. Yes. Is it like an is mineable or something? Let's have a look at the prototype too. Mineable properties. Mineable hardness, mining time, mining particle, and products. So there could be multiple products from a resource. That actually makes sense. <laughs> okay, how did I get here? Luminity prototype dot mineable properties dot products. Okay. So actually, I guess we want, for each thing that we found, we want to find, for each product, we want to create a resource source for this thing. Um, or we want the resource source to handle multiple products. Okay, so resource source handling multiple products actually is, more, is kind of useful, because we might have a base module that produces multiple things. Um, that we want to keep sort of thinking about as a single unit. Um, okay, so we do a little bit of a little bit of rework here. Okay. Um, so let's start methoding some of these fun some of these things up. Um, which means I think it makes sense to put the resource source in its own file if we're going to start uh, messing around with this kind of stuff. Okay, uh, I'll cut that I guess. And of course that needs to be dot lower. Because Adam could never figure out that I was working on a Lua project. There's the S key. Provides type. Type. Um, okay, so now the type is going to need to be types, which is going to be the array. Uh, and it's probably going to include the quantity in there. Type equals some string. Quantity equals some number. Okay. 
So this is now going to be um, for each of my types. Return true. Okay, so that's easy. Um, this is kind of good because it means that we have a good um, we have a good way to sort of designate the uh, fitness as well because we could have the fitness be calculated um, each time. That would be useful, maybe. Okay. So we need to now get the list of products for this resource. This is now going to become an incredibly large list, I guess. Uh, or, or maybe not. It's just going to be a lot of loops. Okay. Um, this is going to be the uh, products, I guess. Uh, resource.prototype dot mineable properties products okay I'm only going to count the time when it has an amount. I think if it doesn't have an amount, I'm not going to put it in because the probabilistic amount is going to be difficult to track. So let's go for a uh, product. So we want products. Well, first of all, if product that amount. Let's do the not equal nil thing because. Why not? Then we're going to ask, uh, we're going to add it to the products array. So products, it's going to be some new table with type equals uh, product, uh, not type, it's, I think it's name. Yeah, because type is going to be item or fluid, which we don't want. We want name. Uh, and then quantity. Amount of the item or fluid to give. I'm just wondering if this is the amount that you get from one, from mining it. For example, yeah, I'm wondering if this would be like, so you mine a tree and you get like four wood, right? But you mine a patch of coal and you get one. Just wondering, see, plus one. And if I could find a tree anywhere on this map. Like this, oh yeah. You get two raw wood. I'm wondering what denotes the differences between those things. And maybe it is just the fact that it's a tree and you'd have to treat it differently. Hmm. I guess we could try and figure it out in the uh, play around in here. So let's see what the um, expected amount from this is, the product of mining this. So, okay, first of all, let's put on the tiles. 